Artificial intelligence, also known as AI, is one of the biggest money-making opportunities for 2023. Every day, there are going to be new businesses popping up out of nowhere, generating hundreds of thousands and sometimes even millions of dollars, gaining all this attraction, all these new users off the back of either cheap or free software. Now, you might think this is a trend. Maybe artificial intelligence is gonna go away a couple months later. I actually do believe this isn't going anywhere anytime soon. In fact, I actually believe this is going to revolutionize every industry, whether it's copywriting, art, 3D, video game, movies, literally every industry is going to be affected by artificial intelligence. So in this video, we're gonna be covering some of the biggest AI trends that I see and opportunities for you to create businesses in these trends, whether you're creating a product or service no matter what industry you're in, I'm going to show you some of the best use cases for AI today. Now, I want to keep things simple when it comes to the explanation of AI. So when I first heard of artificial intelligence being applied into the real world, I actually heard of this company called OpenAI, which is a nonprofit. Now, a lot of the companies that you see, especially the new ones popping up, are using OpenAI in some capacity. And so when I first learned about it, they basically did an experiment where they want to train their artificial intelligence to be able to play Dota, meaning that a computer, not a human being, is playing the game. So when it started, the artificial intelligence wasn't that good. Just think of like a robot playing a game. But as they trained it and trained it, they had it play more games and it learned different things, what works, what doesn't. Eventually, it got so good, it actually beat the top international team at that time, OG, in a 5v5, which is absolutely crazy. And we even see Bill Gates tweeting about this event. That's an example of a specific use case of artificial intelligence, meaning a robot, being able to learn human behavior in order to do something as complex as playing a 5 versus 5 game. Now, over the past couple of months, there has been this explosion of people using artificial intelligence for different use cases outside of just playing games, right? Now, the first one you might have heard of is ChatGPT, which is actually by OpenAI. One of the use cases they had is like using their artificial intelligence software to write words, whether it's English, Chinese, Japanese, doesn't really matter what language it is, you know, it can learn all of these languages with enough data sets, right? Now, one of the most interesting use cases I've seen when it comes to using this ChatGPT is actually copy.ai. So essentially, somebody created a software product, right? So this is a front end, if you go on the website. On the back end, they're actually using this open source software to generate all the chats. So for example, if you are a blogger and it's your job to write blogs that rank on Google, you can basically use this software and it will write your blogs for you. If you are a marketer, let's say you run advertising on Facebook ads and you need to write a couple sentences for the advertisement. Well, you can put the prompts into the software and it will write it for you. Or maybe you are or a lead generation agency and your job is to generate leads by sending cold email. Maybe you don't want to write your own cold email. So you use the software and it will write it for you. Basically, there's so many different use cases, whether it's writing a description on a YouTube video, writing a description for an Amazon product, sales copy for a Shopify store. You feed it certain phrases and it will write the copy for you. And when we look at the pricing for OpenAI, right? And you know, there's different tiers of pricing and it's not necessarily super expensive. If you're someone who wants to build on top of this, you're basically saying, hey, let's use this OpenAI thing. It doesn't cost that much to generate uh, the text. And then I'm going to create a front end on top, meaning that I'm going to create specific use cases and specific niches. And then when someone pays me to write the copy, I will go to open API and it will write it for me. So in fact, copy AI doesn't necessarily have to do all the back end legwork of creating this crazy artificial intelligence, which takes years to train and build. They're just kind of using what they already built, adding one layer on top, which is the website layer and add adding a specific use case and making sure it works and then you can create a business out of that. So how can you use this personally if you are someone who is an entrepreneur, or freelancer or anything like that? Well, if you are, you know, someone that acts as an agency, whether it's ghostwriting somebody's tweets on Twitter, whether it's doing sales copy, whether it's running ads, you can basically just use this to save the amount of time it takes you to actually do the work. And maybe you multiply the amount of clients you can have by five just because, you know, the artificial intelligence writes everything for you. All you got to do is put in the specific inputs and then make sure that everything looks good. So that's using chat GPT and open AI from a text perspective. But what about applying this to art? For me, I'm in the NFT scene, right? So I see what's going on on Twitter. And I remember, there was this wave where a lot of clone X holders, right? They were using this software called Novel AI to generate anime versions of their PFP. They would take a 3D model and then put it through some kind of software and then it will turn it into anime, right? And then when you go on Novel AI, you can see that there's a lot of anime examples. So for this particular front end, they are niching down in that anime scene because people just want to create more anime art and they just got really good at it. And so that's one specific use case on how you can take someone else's software and pull from an API, meaning basically a software that connects other 
other softwares and then have a specific use case like animate, right? One of the most successful examples of using artificial intelligence when it comes to 2D pictures is actually Lenza. So Lenza advertised itself as a photo and pictures editor. So what it is, it's an app that you can get on the App Store and the Google Play Store. And essentially you're gonna be able to edit your photos using artificial intelligence. And it actually uses this software called Stable Diffusion to do this. Now Stable Diffusion, if you didn't know, think of it like API, meaning that it's a software for other softwares to use. So for Lenza, you know, they don't have to build any of their own artificial intelligence per se. They just have to utilize all the work that Stable Diffusion has been building on for years and years, and then just add a front layer on top and make an app that people can use in the app store, right? So essentially you're able to, you know, do things like background blur, tune the face, maybe remove any acne, blemishes, whiten the teeth. And other examples of using artificial intelligence using Lenza is you can actually make, you know, different versions of your picture. For example, you can make it more cartoonish or more surreal, right? Not necessarily super realistic and just editing blemishes, but you can add all these like magical effects and things like that. And it happens automatically because they are using stable diffusion, right? Which is a software that basically has artificial intelligence for images. Not only can these artificial intelligence be used to create a specific type of art, you can actually give it different prompts and then it can generate something for you. For example, going back to OpenAI, one of their softwares is Dolly2, which is an API that anybody can use and you have to pay for it if you use it. You can type in words like, let's say an astronaut and it'll give you this, right? Or if it's teddy bears, it'll give you this. If you say like an astronaut riding a horse in a photorealistic style, it will give you this. Or if you say a bowl of soup that looks like a monster spray painted on the wall and it will give you this, right? So basically whatever prompts you give it, it will create something for you because it has all this information to try to generate an image. Of course, it's pulling from different places. So there always gonna be that issue of like what's copyrighted, what's not, is that stealing or is it remixing? That's a whole other issue that the industry needs to figure out. But just the fact that you can put in text and it will give you something that is pretty acceptable when it comes to art, that is pretty amazing in itself. Even this picture over here, it can even take a one picture and then create a whole different environment out of it just from the original picture, right? So there's many different type of use cases that you can use. Now, another popular use case when it comes to 2D art and even 3D art in this situation is Mid Journey. So Mid Journey has its own software and basically it creates like this specific look. So it's very like magical fantasy. There's a certain color palette that it tends to use. And it, it's a style that, you know, a lot of people do actually like, right? So similar concept, you know, you give it prompts, you give it certain situations, and then it will generate a high quality image for you. Now, how do we actually build businesses on top of this? Well, you know, the first thing is that, you know, the basically there are three main artificial intelligence that you can use. It's going to be Stable Diffusion, Dolly, and Mid Journey, right? Now, Stable Diffusion is actually free and open source. There are a lot of different companies that are using this free open source software and building businesses on top of it. Like I said before, Novel AI, which kind of a lot of people in the anime space use. I actually tried this myself. You have to pay like a monthly subscription and then you get amount of tokens and then you can generate X amount of images. So basically I'm paying like $15 a month to generate like a thousand images or something like that. It actually costs Novel AI nothing to generate because they're using open source software. Of course, there's maintenance of the website and everything like that. But if you get enough people to pay $15 a month, then you can have a pretty substantial business there. Now, if you're using the other software, whether it's like Dolly, for example, which you have to pay a small fee for every time you generate something. Well, as long as the person pays you more money than what you pay to open AI and Dolly, then you're actually profitable in that sense, right? And so depending on how you, what kind of use case you want to do, you can kind of do this arbitrage where you're just making it easier for someone to generate an image. Now, why would somebody want to pay you if they can do it themselves? It's just convenience, right? Like it's all about finding a niche. For example, if you focus on purely anime and you're just really good at using these softwares to make really good anime, instead of the person trying to figure it out by themselves, which is kind of complicated, you kind of create parameters, you create certain situations where they just have to put in a couple of text and it will generate something good instantly. And people will pay for that convenience and that is value generation because you're saving them time and effort because they don't have to do it themselves. Now we're applying this to the future and what the future may look like and how it's going to revolutionize the world. Well, I kind of think of it like this artificial intelligence thing, it just getting started, right? We're seeing use cases where text is getting really good, where it's indistinguishable from human writing. We're getting the art really good, whether it's anime art, realistic art, or fantasy art, you name it, it's getting better and better. And then now we're gonna move into 3D, where you're gonna be able to generate 3D assets. So this is really interesting because for games, a lot of times they have to spend so much painstaking hours generating landscapes and items in the game, potions and stuff like that. But what if you can just give an AI a prompt and it will generate for you and create something original based on 
the data sets that it has. It will cut the time it takes to make a game significantly if somebody uses AI. If you're creating a movie and there's CG, what if AI could create that whole thing for you, right? All these tedious tasks that people have to do in the creative industries, right, when it comes to creating content, they're going to be cut down by many, 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 many hours, days, even years in some cases, depending on how good AI gets. Now, from a skill set perspective, what I'm personally thinking about is in the future, it's not going to be how great your hands are because the AI will be a better hand than most human beings. It's about how good your brain is in figuring out what inputs you want to put into the AI to spit something out that is cool and original, right? Because if everyone's using the same software, we're all on the equal playing field. But the difference between what I create and what another person creates is the creativity of the inputs and the ideas that you put in to get something spit back out. I kind of compare it to life before and after Google, right? So before Google, if you want to know a lot of stuff, you have to read a lot of books. Maybe you have to have encyclopedias in your house and things like that. People will judge you on what you know and see how smart you are, right? It's all about memorization. But with Google, you don't have to memorize anything because you can literally just Google it. Now, if you know how to Google really well, really fast, you technically can learn literally anything that is available on the internet. And that completely changes the game in terms of people's productivity because you can learn anything in a snap of a finger. Now, what if you can create anything in a snap of a finger, right? Instead of learning Photoshop, instead of learning, you know, 3D software like Blender, Unreal Engine and all these things, why not just create it instantly just by putting in a phrase, right? And that is going to change everything no matter what it is you're doing, whether you're doing NFT project, whether you're doing, uh, you know, art, whether you're doing writing, whether you are an agency who delivers services, AI will definitely change the game. So that's why you definitely need to pay attention to to it, use it, and then potentially create businesses out of it or leverage it in some way to grow your own business. So with that said, that is everything we got to cover for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a like, subscribe, turn on notifications. Let me know in the comments if you learned anything new and I will see you in the next one.